Welcome to the show. It's Super Bowl week, Super Bowl 51. Disappointed that the Steelers aren't in it, but we'll be talking about Super Bowl 51 here on the show today. My guest will be Mike Anthony later on, and we'll be breaking down the Patriots and Falcons and even give you our picks. But first, let's start with our usual features, and that's first off will be our Community Champion of the Week. And this week, it is all those people that were volunteers for the American Red Cross Media Blood Donor Day. You know, you, you, you look at this event, the American Red Cross does a lot of things, you know, out there in the community, many things in terms of supporting so many different efforts that are charitable works, but this is a big one, the, the uh, blood drive, because it's so necessary. There's so many times when people are brought to the hospital and that blood's needed, and to have this media uh, donor blood drive day down at West Bank Arena like they had recently is critical in order to be able to have the necessary supply of blood to treat people, to be able to take care of people, whether they come in as a result of an accident or some other uh, condition where they need to be given blood that can save people's lives. So you know, there are a lot of good charities out there that do a lot of good works, but when you're talking about saving someone's life and the things that are done in order to be able to save someone's life, uh, there's nothing bigger than that. And there are so many people out there working that event. Uh, my firm has been very, very uh, happy that we've been able to support this event over the last several years. We're one of the major sponsors of the event. Uh, we even send our mascot down there, usually just as the legal beagle, to kind of greet people as they're uh, down there giving blood. But uh, it, it's a very important effort by the Red Cross. So uh, congratulations to all the people affiliated with that and uh, on the good work that you do here in the local community. Our quote of the week. This one comes from a football coach. and. Paul Bear Bryant, famous uh, coach of the Alabama Crimson Tide over so many years, and he said this, show class, have pride, and display character. If you do, winning takes care of itself. And I think there's a lot to be said about uh, that quote from Coach Bryant, which is that you have to do things the right way, not just in football, but throughout life. And if you do things the right way, if you do them with class, if you do them with pride, if you do them with dignity, everything else will fall into place. And that's something I've always looked at, people like Coach Bryant who've been successful in their lives, not just in football, but in what they've done in life, and tried to say, that's the example on how to live. That's the way you want to do things the right way, whether it be in sports, whether it be in your business life, whether it be in your family life. Do things with class, dignity, and pride, and everything else will work out. So good words of wisdom there from Coach Bryant, and something that we all should continue to strive to live by. Next. Legal tip of the week, being given lousy jobs at work is not harassment. And the reason that I point this one out, and I've talked about this, these types of issues before, is that so many people will call up lawyers and say, I want to sue my employer because I'm being harassed. Well, being given lousy jobs is not harassment. You know, you may be told to, that you've got to be the one that's got to sweep the floors. That's not harassment. You may be told that you're the one that's got to answer the phones at your place of employment. That's not harassment. Well, so-and-so hasn't been there as long as me, and they're not ha they don't have to do those things. That doesn't matter. There's no requirement that because you have more seniority that you don't have to do certain things or that someone with less seniority does have to do them. Employers can decide who they want to do certain tasks, how they want them to be done, et cetera. Now, there are certain protected classes of people with respect to certain issues. For example, you can't be fired because of your race, or in certain instances, your age, or your ethnicity, things of that nature that are protected classes. However, just being given lousy jobs because you think they're lousy jobs and someone else should have to do them because they haven't been there as long as you, or whatever it may be, or my boss just doesn't like me, that is not being harassed. Harassment is a very specific term. Sexual harassment, there is such a thing as sexual harassment in the workplace, and that's a, just defined by very certain things, such as a hostile work environment because of the, the sexual nature of things in the workplace, or being asked to uh, exchange uh, sexual favors uh, for positions of authority or whatever it may be by someone who's in a, pos a position of authority over you. Th those types of things can be harassment, but just being given lousy jobs isn't harassment, so no, you probably don't have a legal case uh, just because you're being given lousy jobs to do in the workplace. So keep that in mind. Uh, but if you're not sure, you know, if you think you have questions about whether something is harassment or not, or if you do have some, uh, some other reason to have uh, a grievance with your employer, you know, you call a lawyer. Uh, there are a lot of lawyers out there that do employment law. You can ask, say, hey, here's what happened. And most lawyers, um, or at least a lot of them, offer free 
initial consultations like my firm does, and you can talk about those things, and you may learn, hey, no, there's not anything to this, or sometimes there may be something to it. So that's our legal tip this week. It's time to take a break. When we come back, I'll have my guest this week, Mike Anthony, with me. We'll be talking about Super Bowl 51, the Patriots and Falcons. Stay with us here on the Jamie Bordas Show. Bordas and Bordas, fighting for justice. I was the oldest of nine children, so as a result of that, I grew up fighting battles for my brothers and sisters, and we grew up in some pretty tough neighborhoods. I saw juveniles and women being mistreated, and I thought that it would be a wonderful thing to be able to fight for people that were less fortunate and that couldn't fight for themselves. The thing that I enjoy still is helping people and fighting fights that other people sometimes weren't able to fight themselves. Bordas and Bordas, fighting for justice. Bordas and Bordas, fighting for justice. Welcome back to the show. It's my favorite time each week. That's when I have a guest on. And this week, we'll be talking Super Bowl 51 because it is Super Bowl week. And my guest this week is Mike Anthony. Mike, you've now set the record for most <laughs> appearances on the Jamie Border Show. This is your third time. and I'm so proud. You know, we talked, uh, you know, NFL uh, before the season started, preview. Uh, I think you had Steelers and Packers to go to the Super Bowl. Didn't quite make it. It was both pretty close. darn close. Yeah. It was pretty darn close. I had Steelers Seahawks. Didn't quite get there. Two teams that neither of us picked, the Patriots and Falcons now will face off yeah. in Super Bowl 51. And, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, Patriots, you can kind of expect to be there. Falcons, though, yeah, people wouldn't necessarily have, not many people would have maybe thought of them at the beginning of the year. Here we go again with that high powered offense of Atlanta against that what of new england that boring just get it done offense and defense the high powered team never wins this game it seems like they get shut down somehow and that's all we've heard for two weeks is how belichick will shut down the falcons after two weeks of preparation which will probably happen but that's why they play the games well we'll get to our picks here at, at the uh you know at the end of our time here on, on, the, on the show but let's first start off talking about the patriots and specifically you, know, you mentioned coach belichick Tom Brady, you know, really seventh Super Bowl appearance now for each of them. Pretty Re impressive. Records, yeah. I mean, no, nobody's ever done it before. No player's ever been in the Super Bowl seven times. No coach ever been in the Super Bowl seven times. Uh, and, and they're both going for win number five in the Super Bowl. So, you mm. know, pretty, pretty daggone impressive. But, you know, with respect to the Patriots, what does that experience mean? I mean, does that transition from one year to the next, you know, when you get into that spot, you know, in the, in the game, uh, does, that, does that experience help and, and, and how will it help them? But you've got these guys that, you know, it seems like they're interchangeable parts from year to year. I mean, right now it's Edelman and Amendola, you know, it could be Wes Welker and, you know, years ago it could be, <laughs> and no Gronk, of course, in the Super Bowl. Uh, Rob Gronkowski uh, has been injured and, you know, so uh, Doesn't and, seem uh, to matter. Yeah, I mean, it just <laughs> seems interchangeable parts when you have, but the constants are, are Brady and Belichick, and they've got the, you know, the the number three scoring offense in the league, the number one scoring defense. I mean, just seem to be all around solid play. So, what can we expect to see from the Patriots? You think in this game? I, you know, what can you expect from them? Uh, just by looking at it on the surface, they're going to come out and throw their dinks and dunks and run the ball when they have to, surprise you, mix it up. Brady is the master, Jamie, of coming to the line of scrimmage and surveying what the defense is going to do. He can pick out that Mike linebacker or knows who's coming. He can figure out who's spying him. He knows where to go with the football. And if you give him any kind of time, he's going to pick you apart. Ask the Steelers, who seem to play a zone defense a little too much for a lot of people's likings, and he just found holes and picked them apart with a former college lacrosse player. So it seems like you can put your eye out there at receiver, and Brady is going to find you. Uh, it doesn't matter who they have, that one constant, that 39-year-old sixth-round pick at number 199 seems to have been the magic, magic, magic charm for this New England franchise. And I don't expect it to be any, any different um, you know, because the Falcons have a pretty good defense. Does that matter? Doesn't seem to matter. You can bring the number one defense against the Patriots, and it always seems to not matter because he'll pick you apart and find the best matchup out there. 
You, you mentioned that game against the Steelers, of course. You know, that, that, that was a game or a result. I don't think that anybody really expected. I mean, I think you, know, you look at it, the Patriots were favored. It was in Foxborough. Yeah, okay, Le'Veon Bell uh, was hurt, couldn't go very long in the game. But I don't think anyone expected the complete dominance in really all phases of the game and, and this, the magnitude of that dominance that the Patriots mm. were able to display against the Steelers. And that really changed my perspective a little bit on this Patriots team. I thought, you know, maybe they're vulnerable. I, you know, I thought the, the Steelers could go up there and knock them off. But my, my whole thinking on them changed after seeing the dominance they were able to display in that game. Well, the Le'Veon Bell injury, don't, let the, don't, let, don't just blow over that. That could have been 30 carries, ball control, a couple of touchdowns, and that's a different game. Uh, yeah, I think Angel, the Angela Williams played well, but it's not Le'Veon Bell, it's not 30 carries, it's not ball control. It's a whole different game plan. And when that happened, it just seemed like Pittsburgh lost every kind of mojo. But not to harp on that game, the Patriots do what they do. Um, <laughs> Are they going to beat the Falcons? Probably. Uh, are they going to run crossing routes all day against linebackers who can't guard little tiny receivers? Yep, probably. Are they going to hit a big one down the field? Probably. Are they going to run a trick play? Probably. Didn't we just see that last week against the Steelers? <laughs> if, if they're able to win this game, I mean, does, does Brady go down as the greatest quarterback in the history of the NFL? Well, your man Joe Montana certainly has uh, a good argument. 4-0 in the big game. Uh, Terry Bradshaw 4-0. Yeah, yeah. Uh, were all Montana's MVPs? No. I don't believe so. No. No, no I think Rice had an MVP Rice in there. Rice had one, and, yeah. And, uh, and uh, it may have even been somebody else that had one in there. But, but yeah, you, you know, you have to say it. As much as I don't like Tom Brady, and I can say that publicly, I think, <laughs> um, you know, I think he has to be the best. He does it with pretty much nobodies. I mean, Julian Edelman's a seventh-round pick and he's their best receiver. Uh, they brought Hogan in, who played college lacrosse, and then one year of football, Monmouth. Uh, can we take West Liberty's receivers and put them out there and probably play? It might be an upgrade. I mean, he just wins. You give him a huge weapon in Gronk, he gets hurt, they put another guy in that spot. I mean, boy, when they had Randy Moss, they really played well. Uh, he just does it all. I think he is the greatest of all time, uh, you know, it's amazing that Drew Bledsoe got hurt. Brady comes in. He's a 199th pick overall, and voila. You know, that's how life and history is determined and changed that quickly. Of course, Bill Belichick going for his fifth Super Bowl win. And, mm. you know, where's his legacy among coaches? I mean, it's, you know, he, of course, a little bit tarnished always there because of some of the, you know, the deflate gate, the, the spy gate, all the different, you know, name a gate that he's probably been involved <laughs> with it. Uh, but, you know, these, these things with, where he's always trying to get an edge and, and maybe in a way that's not appropriate uh, and has been, he's, you know, he, he has, you know, of course, Brady had to sit out the first uh, several games this year because of that. But, uh, you know, where, where does he rank and where does he go down in history? Gosh, you have to put him up there as the most boring coach, the hoodie, but I think you have to put him up there above Chuck Knoll and uh, Bill Walsh and all those great coaches. Uh, <laughs> he's the Mount Rushmore of uh, NFL coaches, Brady and, and Belichick. And we might see him for a few more years. Tom said he wants to keep playing. So uh, who knows if the Steelers will ever get another shot. If they have to keep going to Foxborough, I don't think they're ever going to get back to the Super Bowl. Uh, we'll see. You never know year to year. We need to take a break. When we come back, we'll be talking about the Falcons and then give you our predictions on the big game here for Super Bowl 51. Stay with us on the Jamie Borda Show. Bordis and Bordis, fighting for justice. Start the new year with quality natural products from Danoon Lumber. 8-inch tongue and groove pine paneling, available in 8, 12, and 16-foot lengths. Now only 85 cents a linear foot. Live-edge cherry, only $8.50 to $10 a board foot. Why not walnut? Walnut barn doors make any room even more stunning. As we always say, better grade, better selection, better price, better hurry. Denoon Lumber. Bordis and Bordis, fighting for justice. Welcome back to the show. We're talking Super Bowl 51 here this Sunday 
Patriots Falcons from Houston, Texas. And my guest this week, Mike Anthony. Mike, we've been talking about the Patriots. Now let's turn our attention to the Falcons. And one yeah. of the big things about the Falcons, local guy from Wheeling on the roster, C.J. Goodwin, a defensive back. And you know, how talented do you have to be? We've talked about this before. You know, to go from playing college basketball to being a receiver on the Steelers practice squad to now being a defensive back for a Super Bowl team. You know, you got to have a world of talent to be able to go from basketball to the NFL, from receiver to defensive back. And he's been able to do it. And a lot of people here in the local area are rooting for the Falcons, not only because they – dislike the Patriots so much, but right. also because they're rooting for the local <laughs> right. guy, C.J. Goodwin, to get that Super Bowl ring. I think the percentage of people around Wheeling who are voting for the Falcons is really high, and uh, it's partly because of C.J., partly because they hate the Patriots, yeah. and they're Steeler fans <laughs> uh, like us. But, uh, you know, what a story it would be to have a kid from Wheeling win the Super Bowl. I mean, we've done a lot of research on this over the years, and uh, from Bob Jeter at Weir High playing in a Super Bowl, and the early years of the Super Bowl, and Chuck Howley losing a Super Bowl, of course, the legendary legend from Warwood. But this would be the first guy from Wheeling, you know, who went to a local school, a Wheeling Park, a Wheeling Central, or a Lindsley to win a Super Bowl. And boy, we're really, really pulling for C.J. Goodwin, number 39. Uh, I know folks uh, were around Wheeling were selling his T-shirt with the name on the back and have a Super Bowl watch party. Uh, and those are all fun, man. I, I hope they win it. Um, and it'd be really nice to see him play a role, maybe tip a pass away from Brady at the end of the game as they're driving for the winning score potentially. But be neat to see him not only play, but play well and do something significant. Of course, this Falcons team, a three-point underdog here in this game. You know, the Patriots uh, you know, have been there before. The Falcons really haven't been. You know, Matt Ryan. First time in the Super Bowl. Be interested to see how he handles that. But one of the things that I look at is, you know, the Falcons, the number one scoring offense in the league, going against the number one scoring defense in New England. But on the other side of the ball, you know, New England, the number three offense, but the Falcons only have the number 27 defense in the league. So that's where I really look and see, can this Falcons defense that's the number 27 defense mm -hmm. in scoring mm -hmm. in the league, mm -hmm. you know, be able to hold down that number three mm -hmm. offense in New England with all that experience from Tom Brady that we talked about, can they do that and hold down the points enough uh, to allow them to stay in the ballgame? I don't think so. I mean, Brady is so poised. He never makes mistakes. He'll throw the ball away and, and live to play another play. He doesn't take shots into double coverage. He always waits for those crossing routes. And again, the protection holds up. He waits for that crosser to come against the linebacker. And uh, he just does so many things correctly. Barring turnovers in the Renown end and giving Atlanta easy scores, I, I don't know how Atlanta wins the game. Yeah, they can score, but this game is usually never won by defense. How, how's, how's Matt Ryan doing this game? Is he going to, you know, oh boy. For, for a first time in, a, in this type of setting, uh, you know, Brady's been there more times than anybody in the history of the game, and now you've got a quarterback on the other side who's got to show up there and try to hold his own. Can if he, they can stay balanced, Atlanta has a really good shot because they have a good two-headed monster in that backfield. But if they're chasing points, it's pass, pass, pass. That's usually good for Matt Ryan. They're good at that. They have one of the best receivers in football in Julio Jones. He may be the best receiver in football, especially when those guys are together on the same wavelength and on turf. Um, you know, it could be a high-flying show down here, but every time we think it's going to be high-flying because these teams can score, 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 it always comes down to nerves and defense and mistakes And on this huge stage. Um, yeah, the Falcons can score enough, uh, but so can the Patriots. And I, it, it just never seems to be what you think it's going to be when you go into the game. And I just think that the Falcons scoring all these points, what, 30 or more every game just about, uh, you know, I, if they can score over 30, I give them a shot. I don't pick them to win, but I think if they get over 30, they could win this game. Well, let's get to our picks here. I mean, we're, we're, let's, let's <laughs> yeah. talk about this. We, yes. we've, we've broken them down. We've talked about it. So who wins this game and by how many, Mike? Well, you know me. I like my one points. It's a three-point uh, three line, which that's what it usually ends. Um, I guess I'll go Patriots. Uh, let me do 31-28. Patriots. All right. Well, I'm going to go with Patriots, too, because I like the defense. You know, you, you talk about both teams have great offenses. Patriots, or excuse me, Falcons, number one scoring offense. Patriots, number three scoring offense. Both great offenses, but the Patriots are the number one defense in the league. Falcons, 27th in scoring defense. So I think the defense will make a difference when you've got this really stand out Patriots defense to go along with Tom Brady and what they have on offense. I just think it's too much. 
I, I don't usually pick this way in an NFL game, <laughs> but I'm going to go Patriots by 11. Uh, I, I'm going to, I think it's going to you know, be out there a little bit, you know, and I, I say that because of the, the defense, and I think they'll be able to shut down Matt Ryan. I think his lack of experience in Super Bowl games compared to Brady's experience. You're talking about absolutely. You know, uh, now the, the coach has been there with Seattle. He was he was with Seattle when they had their Super Bowl runs. You know, uh, he's he's had some experience, but not as a head coach in the big mm -hmm. game. Um, but I think that they'll be fine there. But I just think that that Patriots defense, when it comes down to it, is is just too good. So I'll go Patriots by 11. That's a good pick. Uh, as much as we hate to pick the Patriots, uh, we're both going with them, which means Atlanta will win the game. Well, I hope they do. You know, I hope they do because I, I, I'd love to see the local guy get a Super Bowl. Wouldn't that be great? Be I'm fantastic. rooting for CJ so much, but I'm trying to get one correct on this show. I've seen people like my friend Boogie Johnson putting pictures out there this yes. week and stuff. I mean, picture of him in a little Patriots uniform. That, that was awesome. Yeah, it, it's really cool to see that. You know, and give something for these other kids here in the local community to look up to. So many kids think I like to get to the Super Bowl. Well, here's a guy who played for the little Patriots here in Wheeling that's made it to the Super Bowl. So really, really cool story there. Derek Wolf, OVAC product, yeah. plays for Denver, won it last year. Maybe the former Lindsley cadet C.J. Goodwin can keep it uh, two in a row for the OVAC. Wouldn't that be something? It would. That'd be something. Well, Mike, thanks for being on the show here today. Thanks for your breakdown, for your pick. Uh, we'll see uh, if we're right or wrong. We've been, <laughs> we've been wrong a couple other times this year, so we'll see if we're, we're wrong on this I'm one. I'm sure that trend will continue. Yeah. Well, thanks for being here, Mike. We need to take a break. When we come back, we'll continue talking sports here on the Jamie Borda Show. Danoon Lumber is proud to be the sponsor of the Wheeling Chamber of Commerce Home and Garden Show, February 10th, 11th, and 12th at West Banco Arena. Stop by their display and see for yourself the beauty and affordability of natural hardwood moldings and paneling. Danoon now also features quality Amish-made furniture, including rockers, tables, chairs, and benches. Better grade, better selection, better price. Danoon Lumber. Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration has been restoring homes after disasters for nearly four decades. Through that experience, we present Panhandle Custom Homes, Kitchens, and Baths. We handle your entire project, from concept to completion, working with you every step of the way. From the budget-minded upgrade to a fully custom remodel, you can trust the Panhandle name. Panhandle Custom Homes, Kitchens, and Baths. Welcome home. Progressive Bank understands borrowing money can be a daunting experience. Our local lenders ease your mind and help you get the loan you need and deserve. Progressive Bank, personal bankers with millions to lend to local families and businesses. Come in, Ohio Valley. We're lending. Welcome back to the show. Time to talk other sports. We've spent some time here talking about Super Bowl 51, but WVU basketball continues to be something that is fun to watch. And this week, big win out at Iowa State. You know, I've been saying repeatedly on this show that I want to see how the Mountaineers do on the road and that was a good road win. I mean they were tied for third in the Big 12 Conference with Iowa State going into that game. Mountaineers have moved up in, at least in one poll to number seven in the polls uh, with the big recent wins but to go out there and, and you know, face good guard play and be able to still come away with a solid win I think was important for the Mountaineers. I'm going to continue to watch them on the road but uh, this week come back to the, the Coliseum in Morgantown for a, a Saturday uh, early evening game against Oklahoma State five in the evening on Saturday. Um, that'll that game will I always look at these coming back off of the road trip to see how the team performs. You know, I've said before WV feeds off the energy in that Coliseum. I think they'll get the win against Oklahoma State. The one I'm still eyeing up is that February 13 game at Kansas. You know Kansas is up in the top five in the country. Uh, Mountaineers have, have already beaten them at the Coliseum, but that's the big road test that I want to see. You know, they, they also have to face Oklahoma and the, the weeks ahead here on the road, but Oklahoma is struggling this year, um, you know, not doing as well as they have done in years past. But nonetheless, the one I want to see is Kansas, because if they can go out to Kansas, Kansas and beat the Jayhawks on the road, I think that'll show the Mountaineers can play away from the Coliseum against anybody. You know, are they going to be able to beat the Kentuckys of the world? Are they going to be able to beat the top-ranked teams? You know, Gonzaga up to number one now. You know, always around and in the conversation, but not the what I would say call a traditional power. But if they can go and show they can beat Kansas, that means they can beat the Kentuckys, they can beat the Dukes, they can beat the North Carolinas, the the blue bloods, so to speak, of of uh, college basketball, and to be able to do that, that means they'll be able to do it in the NCAA tournament when it counts at a neutral site. So let's continue to watch what happens and eye up that February 13th game at Kansas 
But uh, a test this week against Oklahoma State at the Coliseum. I'll take the Mountaineers in that one. You know, NHL action. The Penguins are, are interesting to see what's going on with them this year. And talk about home in a way, like I was talking about in basketball. Penguins have the best home record in the NHL. I mean, they've won like 20 games and only lost three of a PB, PPG Paints Arena. It's almost hard to say. It used to be console, but now PPG Paints Arena. Um, but in any event, doing very well at home, but right around 500 on the road. And, and that's keeping them from being much, much higher in the standings than, than they otherwise would be. I mean, I think they're third right now in, 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 you know, in the playoff race. But it's that those games away from home. And you know, when you're having those problems, maybe it's time for the coach to look at how do we change up the, the pregame routine on the road? How do we change up the, the travel? How do we change the day up? There, there, maybe there's something that can be done there to shake that loose. I mean, they've got three of the top scorers in the league in, in Crosby and Malkin and Kessel. Uh, so they've, they've got good goaltending. They've got the tools there. But it's, it's those road games that just seem to be a struggle. And of course, it's always tough to repeat in any sport. You know, Penguins coming off that Stanley Cup championship last year. Hard to always get the team refocused, remotivated. You're going on the summer victory tour where everybody's got the cup for a day and all those different things where they really spend the time and are they as hungry as they might have been otherwise. Uh, you'd like to think yes, but I think human nature is that you, uh, people tend to rest on their laurels to some degree and then maybe you have to not win it for a year to get hungry again. But hopefully this, the Penguins aren't in that category. Hopefully they can focus when they get on those road trips and find a way to get it done on the road because when you get in those playoffs, you know you have to win on the road. You're, you know, and, and one of the keys here is that in order to have home ice advantage throughout the playoffs, they, they you know they got to get up to the top of the standings, and they're not going to be able to do that unless they can start getting some more road victories here. So we'll keep an eye on the Penguins uh, as the season continues to progress here. You know, it's uh, the season will start to wind down. You know, there's only a couple months left of the regular season. And uh, still plenty of games out there, but the, and then they're, the Steelers, or excuse me, the Penguins aren't trailing uh, out of first place by that many points, but, but they got to get busy here on the road in order to, to be able to make a run. I think that one of the things that we really want to wa look at in the, in the weeks to come here also is what's going to happen in free agency with respect to baseball and the NFL in the weeks to come. You know, ben Roethlisberger looking more and more like he's probably going to return to the Steelers, you know, but people are talking about A.B. and the other players, uh, you know, what's going to happen with Landry Jones, keep an eye on that. And then also, are there going to be any trades, any, uh, any moves with respect to the Pirates? You know, there's been a lot of talk about Andrew McCutcheon and others. We'll keep an eye to see what happens with respect to those professional athletes that people here in the local area tend to watch and see what's going on with them as well. Thanks to all of you for being with us. Hope you enjoy the Super Bowl this weekend. My pick, Mike Anthony's pick for the Patriots. We'll see if they hold out. See you next time on the Jamie Bordas Show.